Oh shit, listen, I didn't see you guys there. This is uh kind of awkward. Be right back. Yo, what's up, y'all? You guys can call me Gray Sensei. In this video, I'll be taking you guys under my wing and showing you the ways of an attacker class. Now listen, this video may not be for everyone, but if you want to get better at the game and truly become a strong ninja, then this video is for you. In today's session, I'll be showing you guys the best DLCs to buy for attacker class and one of the strongest techniques in the game. So make sure you pay attention. I'll see you guys in the chat. Yo! I guess we're going to begin this video by I'm going to be showing you guys a couple flashy combos in Shinobi Striker. But here's something that you guys need to understand. Being a good attacker in Shinobi Striker, it's not about someone who knows how to do flashy combos or knows how to get a lot of kills in a 4v4. It's about someone who has the most presence on the battlefield and knows how to execute. Being an attacker in Shinobi Striker that knows how to execute and get the job done can make a big difference. You know, if you want to be noticed, you're not going to be noticed for your combos, you're going to be noticed for your presence on the battlefield. Alright, I'm about to spit some facts on you, so make sure you pay attention. To be the ultimate support on your team, to be the someone that has a big presence on the battlefield, sometimes it means not getting all the kills, sometimes it means you're going to be protecting more than killing or going for scrolls. That's what it means to have a presence, it means that you're actually making a difference in the battlefield. You're doing what needs to be done in the time that it needs to be done. I hope you guys understand. Alright, so next now we're going to talk about the best DLCs in Shinobi Striker, with the top 3 DLCs that you should buy if you're an attacker main. Sorry to say, but listen, Shinobi Strikers pay to win, and the best DLC that you can buy if you want to be ahead of the game is Shisui DLC, and here's why. Shisui's ultimate is amazing for flag. If you have Shisui's ultimate for flag or combat, you're going to be ahead of the game, because kind of all you got to do is grab the flag, pop your ult, and you're good. Then his jutsus are really good for attacking or defending. In general, this DLC is top tier because it can be used on all three game modes. Ubo is a game changer. If an attacker has Ubo, he's going to have the advantage over someone who doesn't. So we're going to put Minato in between 3 and 4 because him and my guy are very close. But he's another good DLC to buy. But here's the thing. His Jutsus are kind of decently tiered, but his ultimate is a thing that's a game changer. There's a reason why Minato's DLC has been meta for 2 years because how good his ultimate is. You can literally use it in every type of situation. This is why it is so good. You can use it to defend the flag. Use it to stop someone from scoring the flag. You can use it on base battle, flag, or combat. Even to get kills overall it is very good it's extremely fast now does it have a couple corners like orbs yes but if you time it right this is still a really good dlc now listen even if my guy is not on my top three i still think dynamic entry is such a game changing move so if you do have the money you should definitely give my guy a chance on top of having an OPS alt for attacker mains, Naruto DLC is very very good for base battle because here's the thing, it breaks sand shield and water pillar which is all people run on base battle so you can use this to instantly break sand shield or water pillar although you can use purple lightning tool but these juices will knock someone completely off the base and it will stun their heal growth and then you'll have his ultimate which lasts very long and it gives your teammates their jutsus back and a little health so this is very good for base. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what's the proper clone to run in a competitive standpoint as an attacker. Well swift step is really good because it gives you the chance to counter attack immediately. After you sub you get that speed boost so you'll dash at somebody like a crackhead. And then we're going to use shadow clone which is another good alternative which will increase your survivability by a lot because it's going to sub you away from the enemy. So if you want to become a good player we're either going to run swift step or shadow clone. We're not going to run non Naruto's new clone because if you get hit by a Hazan strike, you will have a 40 second cooldown. So the best ninja tools to run as an attacker, one we got purple lightning tool which is very good for breaking things like sand shield and water pillar, and then it gives you that super armor so if you want to stay on the base for a long period of time, you can now a purple lightning tool, yes you will still take damage, but if you have a healer, you will be fine, and on top of that you can also grab the flag and then pop purple lightning tool, and people can not knock the flag off you so it is a very good alternative. But listen, purple lightning tool is dog shit for combat so you only want to run it for flag or base, for combat, we're going to run Explosive Kunai, which works really well with hard-hitting jutsus like Dynamic Entry or Leaf Rising Wind. Or we're going to run Kunai, which will better help you track your enemy that you're targeting. Honestly, this was only the basics of playing attacker for those of you guys that are new to the game. 
If we can get 400 likes on this video and it ends up doing well, I promise I will do more Ninja Tactic videos. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's been pretty lit and I'll see you guys later. Peace.